morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Katie DeSalvo Thronson, and I am the Community Engagement and Partnership Manager for the Howard County Library System. And we are really excited to have you here tonight for a conversation about an important conversation in our community, how we can take action for equity in education. So the Howard County Library System provides high quality education for all, and that includes some excellent education and high quality resources on a range of equity topics. Part of learning is applying what you learn. So we have been extremely proud and happy to be running a racial equity and local action series with support from the Horizon Foundation to help connect people to local issues and organizations. Tonight, we're gonna to have short presentations from seven organizations, followed by two 20 minute breakout rooms in which you can engage with these organizations directly and learn more. We hope this event inspires many of you to think about uh, next steps in your work for equity um, with these organizations or in other ways. Um, you'll see that this event is being recorded. Uh, just the main room will be recorded, not those breakout rooms. And that's with the intention of sharing this presentation with folks who cannot make it this evening. So um, just a few notes on the presenters tonight. We know there are many groups doing advocacy in this space in the county. To keep the event size for interaction and engagement, we limited invitations to members of our Racial Equity Alliance and their organizations. So every member in our Racial Equity Alliance was invited to share their work or the work of the organizations they're embedded in that's related to advocacy for equity and education in our county. We know um, this is an ongoing conversation in our community and we anticipate future programming on the topic. I wanted to share a few notes about the culture of the event we're hoping for. Um, hope as much as possible to mimic the conversation in person, really encourage you as you're able to um, turn your camera on, make sure your name is right and really engage with folks as much as possible. Um, as in any important civic conversation, we're expecting people to have a variety of experiences and perspectives. Views and opinions that are expressed here may not reflect the views of Howard County Library System. No viewer opinion should be stated with the intent to malign any ethnic group or individual. We value and respect your perspective and appreciate you valuing and respecting the perspectives of others. Lastly, in our HCLS trainings and events on equity, we really encourage participants as much as possible to try to assume the good intent of other folks who are here tonight, um, who I assume are all here to make a difference for, for children and for the overall well-being of our community. We're gonna start by quickly doing two fast polls to get a sense of this room and who's here tonight. This is an opportunity for you to give us a little bit of information about you that will help our, our seven speakers. Um, and we look forward to more interaction with you later in the event. Huh. I think I need my... Um, wonderful producer to launch this poll. Sorry for the delay. It looks like we do have uh people answering now. Are you able to see that, Katie? Uh, no, that is just fine. You can uh, close it out when you see a healthy percentage of respondents, then we'll all be able to see the answers. Thank you, Ash. So you'll see the first two questions really just get a sense of your experience um, and your knowledge level. If you could close that uh, poll out so we can see the results. Okay. 
folks, I'm sorry for this for this technical difficulty. All right, Katie, um, I can see the results. Do you want me to read them off? Please Is that do. Work? Okay, great. So question one, have you experienced or heard about inequities in education connected to race and or ethnicity? Um, we had 4% responding, I don't think so, 0% maybe, 35% saying yes, some, and 61% saying yes, all the time. For question two, how well do you know local education issues? We've got 17% responding, I am curious and I want to learn, 52% responding, I know a little, and 30% responding, I know a lot. And those were our only two poll questions, correct? I think we've... There's a second poll, um, people's activity level, and how much you're affiliated with an organization doing this kind of work. Okay. Oh, let's see. Sorry. I don't see that second poll. Um, I only see the two. Yeah, I think we only got the first poll, so we need to launch the second poll. No, there's a drop-down menu at the top. And so there's three choices, getting a oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so if yeah, current, if so, if everybody can go to their, if you click on the polls option in your toolbar and you can scroll between getting a sense of the room and current activity, if you can go to current activity, it looks like nobody's responded to that one yet. I'm gonna go ahead and launch that one. And we'll just take a moment to allow everybody to have some time to respond to that. The questions are, are you currently taking action to advance equity? And are you connected to a group doing work to advance education equity? So we'll just take a moment now and allow those responses to come in. Just a little bit more than halfway there. We'll give um, another 30 seconds or so for folks to go ahead and answer those. All right, so responding to question one, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll here. Uh, question one, are you take, currently taking action to advance education equity? We have 46 percent saying I'm active monthly or more, 21 percent saying I'm active a few times a year, 4 percent saying I do something or donate once or twice a year, and 29 percent saying I'm not active yet. Question two, are you connected to a group doing work to advance education equity? We have 33 percent saying I'm not connected to advocacy or organizing groups, 21 percent saying I support groups and take action but I'm not a member, 38% saying I'm a member of an advocacy organization um, or organizing group working on e education equity and 8% saying I'm a leader of an advocacy or organizing group working on education equity. Thank you so much, um, Allison and Ash for helping with that. Um, very pleased some folks have found their way to us who are newer to this space. Also hoping that this event is inspiring for folks who have been here for a while. I'm so pleased right now to introduce our featured speakers of the night um, and get into the heart of the discussion. Um, first, we are going to hear from Daniel Burns of Equity for HC. Good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Can you hear me okay? Daniel, I am sorry. Oh. No, nope, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I needed to uh, handle another housekeeping comment. I believe I'm done. Sorry. Please go ahead. All right, Katie. Katie and I go back. So right when we were getting started with our organization, Katie was right there. So um, she's been riding with us since the beginning. Um, I'm Daniel Burns. Um, I grew up in Howard County, uh, first through 12th grade. Then I came back and I was teacher, uh, a teacher there, even teacher of the year somewhere there. Um, that was a, another life ago. Um, then I put my kids through Howard County schools. Um, my son said, Dad, why'd you do that to us? It's interesting perspective because you know that the rap in Howard County is how incredible our schools are. So 
my co-founder and I, um, we grew up together. We've known each other since we were five. Um, and so uh, he, he currently is a, a Howard County teacher as well. Um, and but he's currently, I'm no longer. Um, we, 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 we formed our organization to really get to it. Um, we've been fighting behind the scenes to address equity, um, but by formalizing our efforts and um, putting together our organization equity for HC, which is just simply equity for Howard County, um, our, our students, um, my former and his current and his former as well, would tell you that every single one of our students would say that we, we love them. Um, hence a book I'm coming out with, You Can't Teach Who You Don't Love. We'll get to that later. Um, and don't steal my title, anybody. Uh, but that's the truth. You can't teach who you don't love. Um, and, and so we, 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 we organized ourselves to really to, to try to help in the most broad way possible, deep, but, but also broad. And so, so we focused on policy writing. Um, and so we, we dove into policy 1080, which is Howard County's equity policy. Um, and, and, and we were just uh, deeply involved in that. Um, we, we moved on from there and continued to fight that fight um, uh, to put some other things in place, community center, et cetera. Um, but we just have, have um, organized ourselves, joined forces with um, other folks who, who are not scared to have truthful, honest conversations. Um, you know how people tell you, you got to play the game? Man, you can't play games with people's children's lives. And that's what education is, people's children's lives. So we decided to let's, let's, let's get real, stop playing games, and really address the issues that would negatively impact the trajectory of children. Um, and let's remove those barriers and put things in place to make sure that everybody's child can thrive inside of our community. So thank you, and thank you for letting me touch my soapbox just a little, um, but that's who we are. Daniel, um, you had a little more time. You want to tell people a little bit about um, what they can look forward to from you guys and ways they might be able to support you? Yeah, sure. That, that, that's fine as well. So um, we, we've, um, we've gone beyond just the policy work. Um, we also do um, uh, just the basics. So, so uh, you may have heard of Columbia Community Care, um, where folks have been donating. It's been incredible um, to, to see. So that's our grassroots uh, uh, arm. Um, we have uh, the freedom fighter, Erica Chavarria, who, who started uh, Columbia Community Care, and, and we, we've, we've provided um, about a million meals um, since, since we got started when COVID hit. Um, incredible. And uh, not we, the community brought, brought resources to us, and we just simply organized. So we got a chance to see um, our community um, cross ethnicity, religion, political ideologies, um, people coming out of their pockets and putting their money where their mouth is and where their hearts are. Um, people are addressing these gaps that do exist, um, but doing it straight up with their money. And it, it's been beautiful. So at the bottom, uh, basic human needs um, of, of, of food, food and water, um, we've, we've, been, we've been working on that. And, and, and then we've, we've, we've moved from that because that's a response um, but then, then to have a real plan, we put together a plan with, um, it's, a, it's a true community development plan um, led by the community. And, and it's looking at infrastructure. So we're looking at water, food, energy, housing, and banking. And those are our five pillars. We're looking at how to create employee owned entities and co-ops so that we can truly with infrastructure address some of the systemic gaps. And um, we're, we're working on providing uh, and developing um, alternative educational opportunities that we think would um, assist in a number of ways, including development in our community. Um, I could go on forever. How, how is that? Did I feel my time, Katie? That was, that was wonderful. So folks, each speaker is getting four minutes, and that is the tip of the tip of the iceberg. For more uh, with Daniel Burns, you can pick him for one of your um, breakout sessions. Um, thank you, Daniel. So next, we are going to hear from Ming Lee of the Howard County Cheney School. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, um, this is Ming Li, I'm the Board of Director Chair of the Howard County Chinese School. First, I want to thank the Howard County Library System for having me share the equity work that uh, a Chinese school had been doing. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this organization, the Howard County Chinese School established in 1998 and uh, with the mission of promoting the Chinese language, the heritage language and the heritage culture and to promote the community engagement. Um, the Chinese school had been uh, advocating the educational equity for a while uh, with the support from the Harano Foundation Collaborative. Like Daniel mentioned that we work together to uh, the, the 1080 educational equity policies. And I, I want to highlight some of the unique challenges that the Asian Americans, especially the Chinese Americans, uh, are facing. So we are all with uh, categorized that as uh, model minorities. So under this myth, everything seems fine. So we're rich, we have a good education, we have a good job, then why are there any uh, you know, equity issue there? But under the shadow uh, of this myth, so the Asian Americans, uh, some data I studied, some of the data show that the Asian American has the biggest disparities, both uh, economic and the social status and uh, education. So although some of the students demonstrate some uh, good performance in the public school, and uh, we recently, we identified some uh, severe issues such as the mental health issues. And, uh, especially recently during the pandemic, we all know the Asian hate. So the Asian Americans are facing a severe safety concern or threat. So we have a agreement that increasing policy, uh, the policy is not uh, policing, I'm sorry, is not the solution. So one uh, story here, that during the July 4th parade, so we have the team um, join the parade after we passed uh, two uh, young little girls. One little girl said, uh, Chinese sucks, I, I, I hate them. So that uh, leads us to think about what's going on with our education system. What's the problem here we're facing? So we're thinking about that and we're thinking that we need to work on the education. We need to, as Daniel mentioned that, children is our future. We need to work with the children. So with that, the Chinese school established a program called Youth Ambassador Program. Uh, yes, Youth Ambassador Program. So the purpose of this program is to promote the identity recognition and to promote the heritage Asian American, uh, Asian cultures and uh, the promote the recognition within our communities. And uh, so I, I just want to stop here. I don't want to spend too much time. So if you have any uh, question issues, we can uh, discuss further in my breakout room. Katie, am I negotiating my time? You've got 30 seconds left if you want them. Uh, that's all I want to share for now. Thank you. Ming, actually, I have a, a fast, just clarifying question. You talked about seeing significant disparities within Asian American educational outcomes. Are you talking nationally? Are you talking countywide? Can you? Uh, well, that number is a, is a national uh, number, is not a county number. I don't have the county number. So that's why we work on the 1080 policies. So we advocate the um, you know the data policy, and uh, so we should have more data to demonstrate. Uh, the disparity issue there. I want to highlight that, and you know that uh, model minority myth that hide so many facts, the disparity effects among the Asian Americans. So uh, especially in the Chinese American. So that's what I want to highlight here. And also, I want to uh, mention that the Chinese school is not a full time school. It's just a weekend language school. So we're talking about uh, the educational equity and not any equity issue within the school, but uh, uh, countywide so in the, within the public school system. Thank you, Katie. Uh, thank you very much. Um, next, we're gonna hear from Rushir Bakshi of the Indian Cultural Association. 
sorry, I, uh, I may have used up a minute trying to unmute myself, but uh, here I am. Hello, everybody. Uh, I uh, am Rachir Bakshi, uh, or Rachir Bakshi, as, as uh, can be convenient to call me. Um, I represent the Indian Cultural Association. Uh, I am a former military uh, combat veteran. Uh, I've been deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq and other fun places. Uh, and then uh, I live in Howard County. Uh, I've moved here in 2015. So my perspective is kind of new uh, compared to some of the other presenters who have lived here all their lives or gone through the school system. I have not. My two kids, my two daughters, uh, 12 and nine, they are currently going through the public school system here. And uh, I'm happy to report that they're, they're, they're overall, they're, they're quite happy. They're quite satisfied with what they have experienced, um, but they're, they're still a little young. And uh, there, there have been some issues that have popped up since 2016, post 2016, especially where, you know, that there were racial incidents uh, that, that occurred in, in various schools, as well as, uh, the the emphasis on uh, like Mr. Ming Lee said, you know, uh, we we are model minority kind of issues popped up. Like, what do you have to lose? You know, what are you complaining about? Uh, I've heard the term used in uh, reference to Indian Americans that they are uh, quote unquote white adjacent, where they feel like. Uh, the, the, the majority feel as if we are doing well enough to qualify to be white as far as, uh, you know, what, what happens in, in the school system, grades, and so on and so forth. But that is not a, a culturally appropriate way to refer to any, any other uh, race. Um, and it certainly could be, cons you know, construed by some to be a racist uh, issue, racism issue. Um, the Indian community, uh, in the Indian Cultural Association, uh, the biggest footprint that they have right now visible to everybody is uh, the, the, the food bank, uh, not, not the food bank, but the food distribution uh, service that they have, uh, events that they hold uh, in association with, uh, you know, some with the Howard County uh, library system uh, at their locations. Um, and so far, to tell you, to give you a scope of the size uh, of the, the effort, ICA has distributed over 2 million pounds of food to struggling families within our, our community since COVID happened. So it's it's a huge undertaking and a huge effort. And it will be, uh, we, we always welcome volunteers to, to assist with that. Um, some other issues that, uh, from the Indian American perspective, uh, that, that come to mind when we talk about equity in, in, in the school system uh, is the lack of cultural knowledge potentially about who Indians are or where they come from or what their religion is and so on and so forth which in turn, you know, leads to more, uh, which, which in turn makes it easier for folks who haven't received that, um, that, that kind of information to, to say, hey, I don't know them, so I must fear them. So we, we need to stop this, you know, happening potentially uh, starting at elementary school, you know, uh, not at sixth grade, and maybe, maybe uh, when the kids are younger, we, we need to start, in, you know, Howard County is such a diverse community that we need to inform our kids that, we'll, you know, all the other people exist and what kind, you know, what kind of uh, benefits they bring to the population. I think I may have used up my time. Okay, thank you, Rashir. Uh -huh. Next, we're gonna hear from Jennifer Goldberg of the Jewish Community Relations Council. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much to Katie and to the Howard County Library System for putting this program together and for the invitation. I'm Jennifer Goldberg. I'm a member of the Library's Racial Equity Alliance. And I'm here tonight on behalf of the Jewish Community Relations Council, which is part of the Jewish Federation of Howard County. Um, I'm also the parent of two children, 
one at Hammond High School and one at Hammond Middle School. And so these issues are particularly near and dear to my heart for that reason as well. The Jewish Community Relations Council of Howard County or the JCRC cooperates and engages with programs and causes that advance Jewish communal values. And we do our work by forming partnerships, partnerships with community leaders, with elected officials, with community organizations and coalitions and people like the individuals and groups in this room today. And we're particularly excited for this opportunity for that reason. In the area of educational equity, the JCRC has been partnering for a number of years now with representatives from the Chinese American Parent Association of Howard County, with the Howard County Muslim Council, and the Indian Origin Network of Howard County regarding the issue of the school calendar and seeking recognition from HCPSS for a range of cultural and religious holidays. And so most recently, our groups came together to advocate with the Board of Education to make permanent the decision to provide days off from school on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the Lunar New Year, Diwali, and Eid, which the school system has been doing for the past five years. And in a school system in which at least a quarter of the student population are Indian, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, Jewish, Muslim, or of mixed heritage, we all, all the different groups came together to ask that these students' most important holidays be accommodated. And we're excited to be here tonight to try to share what we've been doing and find new partnerships with other groups as well, because we really want to form partnerships with, as I said, each of the groups that are here um, being represented, as well as the individuals who have come here to learn more and share what they're doing. So, um, we're seeking to do more particularly on implementing policy 1080, which was discussed earlier about educational equity, as well as the students rights and responsibilities policy that's being discussed and is going to come up again in February, that we think really has important diversity, equity and inclusion elements to it that all the groups can be um, advocating for. So with that, I'm going to um, put in a plug for you to join us tonight in the breakout session to talk about how you can be involved in our efforts. And so we can learn from you about what you're doing, because what we, we really do want to be seeking new ways that we can partner. And if you can't join us tonight, because there are so many other groups, I'm also going to invite you to visit the Jewish Federation's website, jewishhowardcounty.org, and click on the JCRC tab to learn more about what we're doing. As always, with all websites, it's always getting updated. So um, it's a, but it is an opportunity to learn more about us. Thanks so much. Um, Jennifer, you've got a little bit more time. I'm just conscious that some folks said here that they are learning in this space. So policy 1080 is the school system's um, educational equity policy. I believe it passed about a, about a year ago. Yeah. Um, when you talk about implementing it, is there anything you'd like to highlight for folks attending that you're, you're watching? Um, I think from our perspective, it's we're excited about the policy because we think it really makes great strides in improving educational equity opportunities. Whoops, my, my beeping is going off, telling me. Um, and at the same time, we know that all policies need implementation. Not, we can't really move forward unless we're seeing how the policy is actually working in real life for people. I think it was Ming Li who was discussing data. Um, Unless you're gathering that data and hearing from people in the community and really have your ears to the ground and are listening like we're doing tonight, we won't know whether that policy is being implemented and um, helping students as much as it can. Thank you, Jennifer. I see a, um, a link put in the chat. Um, thank you, Lena Kennedy, for putting it there. Um, for anyone who wants to follow up and learn more about uh, that policy. Uh, now I would like to invite uh, Willie Flowers to speak. He's from the NAACP Howard County branch. Good evening. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Willie Flowers and I represent the NAACP. We stand in this country as the oldest civil rights organization um, ever initiated in this country. Our frame is um, specifically fo focused on fighting uh, racial discrimination. Um, we'll go more into that in the breakout room. But as a frame of what we um, do as a local branch is 
kind of shrouded around our, our four, what we call four game changers. They include economic stability, education, health, public policy and criminal justice, um, voting rights and um, political representation, and to expand youth and young adult um, activities overall. Um, for our branch specifically, as you know, um, if, if people have been consistent, I hear discussions about the, um, the equity policy. We have taken a serious role of being involved in, in the decisions made around policy for quite some time, whether it was the specific committee to look at the uh, policy for equity, diversity, equity, inclusion, or uh, represent, being represented on the um, uh, OBRC, our, our Operating Budget Review Committee, and other committees, the redistricting committee, um, we have taken the same effort um, forward, and that's to focus on supporting issues around um, racial discrimination of all people. And our calls come from everybody. Our calls are not from just black people. Our calls are not just from um, people from our organization. Our calls from people who are facing uh, discrimination based on sex, based on um, uh, gender, uh, based on uh, ethnic, um, the reality, religion, all of these issues of discrimination happening <clears throat> in the Howard County public schools and the Howard County um, community. And uh, we're here to um, um, deal with those issues and have the experience um, to do just that. Um, now, what we have done in recent times is created, um, and we're really planning to implement this in the 2022 um, year, um, because we're looking at this whole idea of a parent council that helps not just students, but parents who are uh, facing challenges specifically with not just public schools either. The public schools are the primary source. That's why people come to Howard County. But because of COVID and a lot of things, people are making decisions not to um, participate with public schools at all. So there's a whole community of um, homeschool um, families who have made decisions um, in that light and um, um, families who have made decisions about private schools, as you know. But uh, all of that said, we, we're taking, we, we've taken a whole, holistic view of all of this to keep the NAACP in the position to fight it. We had to fight um, for details about redistricting, where we um, uh, realized that not just um, the history of uh, racial discrimination in the past, but racial discrimination and, and racial misunderstanding currently make it very difficult for people not to implement some of the strategies from 40 or 50 years ago. Um, we recently reprinted um, the history of black folks in, in Howard County, a book. Uh, we'll talk about this in the uh, in breakout session, but um, what's unique about that is the same challenges that we had three years ago, two years ago with redistricting are the same challenges that were happening when um, African-American families and communities were trying to uh, integrate public schools to simply have what we're calling equity now. But in that, that case, it was a matter of having quality schools, having sufficient and trained teachers, and having facilities that represented um, the best that could be provided for families. And that was not happening. And the same energy and it's detailed in this book, and like I say, we can talk about it later, on, and that the same energy was put forth um, to um, discriminate against African-Americans then, and it was the same spirit that was opposed to steps toward redistricting two years ago. And um, this is something that we're dealing with. Our focus is to empower people. That's a part of equity that we participate in, to empower uh, families and students to be prepared for what it takes to participate in public schools and beyond, because it's not just about the public schools. The public schools are entry point, our schools in general at the teenage level are entry point to what you're gonna do next with your life. And we wanna be and have been consistent in that um, from our foundation in the, uh, in the nation in 1909 and in this state um, 80 years ago. So I don't know where I'm at with time, but that's a frame for um, what you get. We do invite you to our um, panel discussion. We will talk about the parent council. We will talk about efforts around expanding technology for everybody to break down the equity um, and access barriers with technology. And we also talk about the challenge um, that we all face, nobody talks about, and that is one of uh, motivating um, black male achievement, which is kind of a factor that's left out 
of, of this conversation about equity. And we want to make it clear that um, we fight for those individuals and those um, families who are new to this um, uh, community who, who don't come from other countries, but come from right um, over the line in Baltimore City. Um, we fight for them as well, um, as well as a significant conversation about a freedom school, which counters this conversation about um, uh, CTR and um, the negativity that surrounds uh, critical race um, theory um, and how we plan to combat that. Thank you very much. Uh, you packed a lot into that last portion of time. There's uh, uh, so much to discuss here tonight and I really appreciate all the panelists for, for laying that out for us. Thank you, Willie. Um, we're next gonna pivot to um, Jessica Mahajan with Oakland Mills Online. Hi, everyone. Sorry about that. My uh, Zoom cut off a minute ago, and then when I logged back in, I'm no longer allowed to share screen or um, to unmute myself. I am you Jessica Mahajan. That. <laughs> I'm Jessica Mahajan, one of the co-founders of Oakland Mills Online, along with Amy Brooks. I'm joined tonight by um, with Hannah Vogel. Um, she's one of our administrators and program managers. Oakland Mills Online started March 13th, 2020, when school buildings closed. Amy called me up and said, I can't do my Scorpion Speaker Series like we planned. Um, can we, you know, find some way to do this online? On March 16th, uh, the first day the kids didn't go back to school, uh, we started doing eight sessions a day, uh, five days a week, all kinds of topics from journaling to exercise to art and math. Um, we had volunteer educators that were either retired, current, former, all kinds of different teachers of different subjects from elementary school on up to higher education, um, who gave up their time to make sure that our students weren't isolated um, and making sure that they were still engaging in learning and social activities, which were so important when everything shut down. Um, this is, we considered an intergenerational learning space. We started everything on Zoom. And um, we've gone on since then. We don't do the eight sessions a day anymore now that school buildings in the world are opened back up, um, but it has been a wonderful chance. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen while I have a couple minutes left. Sorry, just a second. You'd think I'd have more practice at this. So um, we are, as I said, a nonprofit. We're focused on learning, growing, and leading together. A lot of that has to do with social justice. So a lot of the things that you um, have been mentioned before, OMO is radically inclusive. We believe that everyone has a chance and we should emphasize the voices of those who are often not heard. Um, can everyone that want to be uh, learning, they want to be curious, they, they are the helpers, they're the ones that are always at the PTA events, they're the ones that are always signing up for everything. Um, so they are, they are the ones that are always volunteering with OMO. These are some of our um, topics that we've covered. Uh, the library has been a huge uh, partner in our journey with this because the librarians of the East Columbia Library recognized that a lot of the preschool and toddler kids were not getting that classroom experience that they would often get before they started kindergarten. Um, so thanks to the East Columbia librarians, we still have Spanish club that happens every Wednesday with Ms. Adriana. Um, we've covered books. We've done huge series on the 1619 Project and CAS, uh, which was amazing to go through during while the January 6th insurrection happened. Um, to have that be able to come together and, and really discuss and direct those feelings. So for us, equity in education is not just about the schools. It's making sure that the adults understand that there is a problem so that we can address it and we do reach out and make sure that we are redistricting in a way that, that allows for more equity from school to school. Um, as we move forward, we're not doing the eight sessions, but we are still doing a lot of series. We'll discuss this more in um, the later sessions, but the ways that you can help is by volunteering mainly for Scorpion Speaker Series at Oakland Mills High School, which is a way of connecting um, the youth leaders of today with 
with the current leaders, with the adults, that the people that they can learn from how to have different kinds of careers, how to be an adult with a disability, um, how to be a person of color, how to be how how did you come to this country as an immigrant and how has your life been infected by code switching? All of those are real deep conversations that happen at um, during the Scorpion Speaker Series. And um, I ask as a parent, so I'm not only Oakland Mills co-founder, OMO co-founder, I'm also an Oakland Mills parent. I have three kids in all three levels. Um, it's very important that people reach out to people in other communities and realize that just because your schools have X doesn't mean that the school across the border has the same quality and the same level of um, maintenance on their building. So while we are fighting for things like making sure that those schools are not overcrowded, we also have to look and make sure that our schools are not falling apart and that they have an HVAC system that's not 50 years old. So I ask anyone here that um, doesn't join us in session, not only to check out OaklandMillsOnline.com, but also to visit Oakland Mills United and Oakland Mills Advocates. We have an, uh, a sign up list from Oakland Mills United. Oakland Mills United was founded by um, OMHS grads as a way to encourage students to speak out um, for Oakland Mills schools and uh, making sure that the voices of those that are often ignored, uh, namely our Hispanic and um, black students don't continue to be ignored. Thank you for the time. Okay, thank you, Jessica. And we have our final speaker for this segment. We have Chris Hefty from PFLAC. All righty. Well, thank you all so much for having me today. It's uh, something I was able to join in at the last minute. Uh, Jumel Howard of PFLAG Howard County, who's the current acting president, but also the vice president of our board, uh, was unable to make it and uh, said I should stop in and uh, do this for us. And I was excited to do so. Um, so as a rep representative of PFLAG Columbia Howard County, I just wanted to quick introduce some of the things we do. We work within the LGBTQ plus community, which is an intersectional community, which means that we have people from every Every last one of your demographics. And uh, because of this, we are connected to the broader community through who we support, your children and uh, perhaps even some of yourselves. And uh, through our work, we're able to empower, educate, and um, inform our uh, parents and the youth that we mentor and have uh, kept uh, within our support groups, um, you know, to, to better their lives and uh, their mental health and um, their home lives and just everything all around them. Uh, so my role is a fundraising coordinator, but I'm also the uh, Rainbow Youth and Allies coordinator and uh, facilitator. So I work with the youth. Uh, this is why I was excited to do this uh, event today because I do work with the youth and I'm very in touch with uh, the educational world uh, that they are surrounded in. And um, because of that, before we move into my breakout session, I wanted to speak with everyone about a current threat that's a, that's currently popping up within our world. Um, so uh, I wanted to take the time to speak about a two-pronged attack against educators and students alike as it pertains to equity within our schools. Uh, some of you may already know this group, but it's called the We the People Too group. And uh, they've emerged as one of the latest uh, in anti-equity, anti-LGBTQ plus inclusivity, and anti-educational groups within the county. They've made police reports, harass school admins and staff, as well as attack both the inclusion of LGBTQ plus literature in school libraries and the teaching of CRT or critical race theory. They have been supported by Picket Patriots, the Howard County Republican Women, and Concerned Moms of Howard County. Uh, I personally actually attended their very controversial meeting and forum to find out who was who and who was running this group and what their true uh, intentions were. And I personally find this group to be extremely dangerous to everyone in the county, especially to our students. Uh, they're a threat to educators and students alike because they are anti-equity, 
They are backed by pseudo-Christian ideology. I am a Christian, so I feel as though they're not exactly that. And uh, they are proudly making statements that they are anti-civil rights, against teaching CRT, and introducing any diverse topics centered around equity within schools, and that they believe that the teaching of these ideologies is based off of Marxism, and that it's being fed to these students and uh, undermining parental rights to teaching them about morality. Um, so I was here to raise awareness about this dangerous hate group and encourage the community at large to join me and PFLAG, Howard County, Columbia, to hold a rally at Lakefront in early December so we can assure students and educators that the majority of Howard County residents support them and will fight, them for uh, fight for them in terms of their racial equity and for sexual and gender diverse persons. Um, I will leave my email in the group uh, chat so you are able to get involved and to reach out with me. I'm gonna be organizing that. Um, but that's all I wanted to start with and uh, we can talk more whoever wants to stop in for my uh, breakout session. Thank you. <laughs> Unless you have questions now, if we have time. <laughs> I actually, um... Chris, you had a, a tiny bit more, more time. Is there anything else you want to elaborate in terms of, so that, that sounds like something people like has been looking at recently. Is there anything in, the, in, your, in your past work around educational equity you'd like to raise? You've got about 30 seconds. Sure. Um, well, um, in terms of racial equity, I find that there's uh, some areas where um, even within uh, racial equity groups, there's lack of understanding and uh, I guess proper treatment and addressing of LGBTQ plus persons and youth. Um, a lot of times within other um, racial backgrounds, um, I find that, you know, there's still homophobia that permeates these uh, groups, these cultures. And uh, so something that we do with our um, equity board and uh, task force on with uh, Howard County, um, PFLAG Howard County, is to address these situations and educate others as well as empower those students that are uh, facing these uh, struggles and uh, conflicts on top of their sexual orientations. So it's kind of a two-folded issue. Thank you very much. We are now going to shift into the breakout room portion of our event. In a moment, um, a wonderful uh, producer colleague is going to open up the breakout rooms. You're going to see the organizations that have presented listed. So they're listed in the, or the, the order we went. It's alphabetical. You can select. Um, thank you. This is They're open now. You can select to join a group. Um, if you to continue the conversation, we're going to be in there for 18 minutes, coming back at 8.08. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that was a fruitful second conversation. Um, we know that uh, on such an important topic and with such a wide and interesting range of organizations and people to speak with, that this is the beginning of a conversation. And we really hope that this ripples out, um, that you found some people, organizations, um, and work that you want to connect with in new ways. Um, in the interest of time, since we are right up against our close, I um, wanna quickly ask you guys for a little, um, a little feedback on just this. If you, uh, if you have encountered some of those uh, bits of new information and inspiration for action. So you'll see us poll on your screen. Thank you, folks. Seeing most respondents in, I'll give you a minute or two more. A moment or two more. Okay, we're seeing about a, a third, third, third. People learning a little, some, or a lot. And after tonight, um, about 20% uh, feel they want to learn more and make a commitment later. 76% um, of respondents want to take action with one of the organizations present, and 5% are thinking about taking action in a different way. Um, thank you for that. That is uh, absolutely helpful. Um, before we close, in terms of next steps, we want to know if anyone wants to share either the impact this conversation has had on you or a next step you're interested in taking. So you can either raise your hand or simply unmute yourself. 
I see I'm not. Montoya put a question in the chat about why organizations were, were present tonight. We had, uh, in the intro, we explained that these were organizations, I appreciate the chance to actually reiterate that, connected to the Library Systems Racial Equity Alliance. Um, we have a member of two Latinx education related organizations present and unfortunately present in that alliance and unfortunately neither were able to present tonight in Enlace and Conexiones, um, both in discussion with both of them. Um, I want to thank the library system for having this uh, forum, I guess is what you call it, mm -hmm. um, and really appreciate the opportunity to have engaged in conversation with um, Ming Li uh, regarding the Chinese schools. Very um, helpful. You are very welcome. I um, want to let you guys know about three uh, perhaps related events. Um, and then there, actually, you heard a whole bunch of organizations speak about a really contextual understanding of education tonight, about education alongside issues like food, um, housing, and more, and economic security. Um, on December 9th, we can also think about education and history. We're going to hear from Christopher Bonner, who teaches African American history at the University of Maryland College Park. He's going to be presenting on aspects of the 19th century. A history in the United States and a talk called Against the Law. And here's an excerpt from his event description. Through two stories, one about Black voting rights and the other about the defense of an alleged fugitive slave, we can see the complexities of Black activist communities and the radical possibilities for African American politics. Can I get that? Um, uh, that is in the chat right now. So you'll also receive this via email. Just want to make sure everyone on this call knows that your library system has a beautiful new equity resource center in the central branch. Um, it has over 9,000 new materials on a wide range of equity topics. And it, it's currently also the home of an exhibit called Undesigning, Undesign the Red Line. And Undesign the Red Line is an exhibit on the history of structural racism and inequality in housing and more from 1938 until today. Um, and finally, just want to uh, end on a note of, um, of hope. Last week, as part of this series, we had Dr. Pedro Noguera um, present. He's the Dean of USC's Rossier Education School, and he spoke on education and civil rights in the 21st century. There's a link to his speech in the chat. We'll include that in our follow-up email for tonight. We are able to share that recording and access it um, until November 29th. Um, but really encourage you to watch it if you were unable to attend. Um, Dr. Noguera talked about the importance of everybody doing what they can where they are. He gave some examples from his own personal practice and he gave some incredibly um, powerful and inspiring examples of schools in part from his book on, I believe the title is um, Excellence Through Equity, um, schools that are achieving high levels of um, achievement in a holistic way um, for kids. So encourage you to check out that link if you have not, and really wanna thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, so with that, we're gonna uh, close tonight's segment. I'm just gonna ask the panelists to hang on for a moment for a brief debrief. Uh, seeing some enthusiastic comments in the chat. Thank you, folks.